I'm Walter Feit. Just a little bit about my background. I used to be an evolutionist, professor of zoology. We are honored and delighted to have Dr. Veith with us as a speaker. Um, for those of you who do not know Dr. Veith, he is a world-renowned scientist, lecturer, and author. He has a doctorate in zoology and has authored a number of books. Dr. Veith has lectured to standing room only crowds around the world um, on findings in science, nutrition, and disease. Cheese. Some people say, well, I won't drink milk, but I'll have cheese. Cheese is still okay. Now, let me get to my pet topic, which is cheese. Are you ready? Let's have some fun with cheese. What is cheese? How's cheese made? Firstly, you take the milk, and then you add a culture, and then you have some fermentation, and then you get a curd, and you have some whey. And the curd you can use, and you can make cottage cheeses on them. These are the soft cheeses. So what's bad in this cottage cheese? The fat is bad, the protein is bad, and the galactose is bad. So we have become experts in producing this product, and we call it food for some strange reason. Now, you pop it into your stomach, the bacteria didn't have very much success with what was left over, that's why it's called a mature cheese. It's highly rich in casein, it has some oxidized fat, which is the worst thing that you could possibly have. And this casein is indigestible. The bacteria do not have the enzymes to cleave it. They don't have the acid medium. We have an enzyme, pepsin, which can actually cleave proteins, but it really battles with casein. Because you need something else to unwind it. What is that? Renin. Do we have renin as adults? Yes or no? We don't even have enough of it as infants. That's why mom adds bacillus bifidus. No, no, no. We don't have it. So do we cleave this protein very well, yes or no? No, we don't. And so the cheese stays in there, and we produce a very acid system, which can cause gastritis and uh, chronic ulceritis over a long period of time if we eat a lot of it. And the amazing thing is, we occasionally send samples through for analysis. And that's when the sphincter opens and a little sample goes through. And there are receptors there which measure the size of the molecules. And if they are too large when they come through, we send a signal back and say, close up, the job's not done. The job's not done. And then it stays in there longer. Now, I've already told you that normal plant foods will be in and out of the stomach within four hours. Finish. If you add meat to the diet, it can stay longer. It can stay up to six hours. If you add cheese to this, it can stay in there for 10 hours, even longer. 12 hours. 10 hours is sort of the average for cheese. And that makes for what we call satiety. Feeling satisfied. That is why, if you want to shut your guests up, give them cheese. Then they don't ask you for food very quickly because they feel satisfied. Now, I have a question for you. If you go to people and you say, why don't you change to a healthier diet and eat more plant foods, what is the first thing they will say? It doesn't satisfy me. I eat and I'm hungry again. Well, actual fact, that's what you want to be. When you eat, how much do you absorb from your stomach? Nothing. When do you start absorbing? Once it's in the intestines, isn't that right? So in other words, your stomach must be empty and the food must be in the intestines when you start getting energy from the food. What's the good of eating and keeping it in your stomach? What's the point of that? That's pathetic. So satiety might mean I feel satisfied, but the longer you feel satisfied, the worse your diet is. You want it to empty out. So a good feeling of emptiness means energy. Challenge anyone who feels satisfied for a walk up a mountain. Hmm, let's see how he feels. Satisfied with all his energy in his stomach instead of going into his bloodstream. It makes no sense. In Germany, there's a saying which says, Käse schließt den Magen. 
which means cheese shuts off the stomach. And that's exactly what it does. In fact, cheese should never be introduced into the human stomach. Never. It has no place there. The only place for it is in that other instrument with a chain on it where you pull and go and then it's gone. That's the best place for cheese. 